the birds and the bees george oh yeah. so they were literally birds and bees sometimes it doesn't, depends if they're into that doesn't that doesn't that hurt like i said chafes yeah would be the word for it yeah, yeah. chafing i chafing. would call it stinging there's bees the birds there's pecking you Maybe say some you say tomato i say chafing the bird see the bird goes and gets the worm right the early, early bird. bird yeah right late bird yeah he don't get no worm. Yeah. You know what and, he gets? Uh, he gets the snake in the tree. In the grass. And waiting for Adam and Eve with mm-hmm. the apple. And then we get creation. Oh, man. Wow. Genesis. Genesis. Birth of a new world. Uh-huh. A planet all unto ourselves. You know, mm-hmm. we were we were created in God's image, Kevin. We were. Mm-hmm. And anything that's not should be shot. <laughs> fuck that. Yeah, fuck be, that, man. Should be shot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, really. Shot, eaten, tortured, maybe test shampoos on them. Yeah, test shampoos and cosmetics yeah. and uh, yeah. and uh, and possibly develop um, cures for diseases which plague us. The joke's on us, though, buddy. Oh, what, what is? What's the joke? Well, we're testing it on ourselves now. We're probably going to erase ourselves at some point in the future and leave a clear fucking earth for something else to rise. Well, you know... Plastic will will always be here, though. Plastic? Yeah. Well, someone's got to think about using it again. I love Plastic <laughs> Texas Island. What is, in oh, the, in the middle of the it, ocean? Yeah. Is it really as big as Texas? I didn't... That's the first I've like, heard of that. I, on it? I knew that it was huge. I didn't know it's as big as Texas. That's fucking massive. I know. Wow. I don't think you can stand on it. You can drown in it. <laughs> yeah. If you're a you if you're a dolphin. Yeah. yeah. Certainly. Which, oh yeah, man. They're getting pretty uppity. Oh, I'm George. I'm Kevin. It's just like a dolphin to get uppity. I know. Seriously. So um so many things just right now. We are we are the battling we're battling damn dirty. Damn dirty simian feces. Battling damn dirty simian feces. Damn dirty simian feces. Mm, oh, Cuz nothing says Hey, you turn around like a, a a clod of simian feces, just like into the back of your right neck the on back a cold, wintry night. Um, and if you know anything about anything worth not knowing, you probably already know what we're going to be talking about. And um, how you doing, man? I'm great. It's cold in L.A. It's cold in L.A. Yeah, yeah. Finally, dipped down into like the 40s. We're having a bit of a winter now. I'm wearing a puffy jacket. Yeah, I was going to say. We can wear scarves with impunity. You're, you're wearing like a Gore-Tex jacket. Um, you look rather uh, you look rather ape-like in that jacket. Kind of. Really? Barrel- yeah, yeah. You mean to make maybe kind of a gorilla? It shows my gorilla chest? Yeah, no, no. I mean, it's yeah. kind of, you know, your arms are big. You're stocky in it. You're kind of walking around like a. With big ass ears. Like a big. And I can talk. And you can talk. Yeah. Just like an ape. Mm-hmm. But you have to talk slowly and poignantly and with emphasis. Growling and low in an underbite. In an underbite. And constantly with a smirk on your face, like a grin, like a like an Andy Circus style. The, Andy, the Andy Circus. Circus. That's an unfortunate name. I, I bet he thinks it's rather delightful. You know, his life mm-hmm. is just like a big show. Mm-hmm. Like a circus. Yeah. Not spelled the same way. I clearly. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. So, um it is to someone who's a homophobe. Homophone? Homophobe? Homo- it's a homophone. Homophone? Yeah. What is that? A homophone is a word that sounds the same. That's homo and phone together. Okay. All right. And uh I thought you said homophobe. Homophobe. Yeah. That's different. It was fear of words that sound the same as a homophobe. Gotcha. Yeah. True. Right? No. 
No. no. Different oh, meaning. Different, different meaning. meaning. Andy Circus. So, <laughs> hooray. He is fabulous. It is, man. It is. So, um, man, where are we? We, uh, we have been skirting. We We've been skirting the around inevitable. the issue here. The inevitable. The inevitable is what we're going to talk about here, that apparently we, as human beings, we are card-carrying members of the human race. Yes. We're screwed, man. Yes. We have been screwed. Yes. Since the 1970s. Yes. When this whole little tale first started to unravel itself about this idea that at some point in time, human beings are going to be supplanted by, no, not dolphins. You'd think so because of how smart they are. You would. By damn dirty apes. Apes. They'll get you every time. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got to watch them. Always mocking you with a shit cake (laughs) tan. <laughs> Offering it to you, and then when you turn around, winging it right at the back of your head. Yeah, classic apes. However, I did like that part of the movie. It is how I've made many an escape. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's basically yeah. yeah. You think it's time we fling shit at this? Yeah, yeah we let's, should. Let's do Go that. run, let's run, run. run. Let's, let's throw as much shit as we have around us right now. And get the hell out of here. I'm trying as fast as I can. I, I operated most of my 20s in that way. Like, That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, just, yeah. I would just pick up pick up shit, throw it, and get the hell out of Dodge. Mm-hmm. That's how we break up we, um, around here. We, we, watched, um, we watched War for the Planet of the Apes. And War for the Planet of the Apes is the third in the new the Planet reboots. of the Apes. The reboots. Well, this is the second reboots of the Planet of the Apes, though. But not yeah. Do you mean Tim Burton's? I mean Tim Burton's two thousand one. But it's a solo entree. It's a solo job. I yes. I, the intention was not for it to be a solo job. It just it did horribly. It did. Yeah, it did. It was mocked and rightly so. It was pretty awful. I don't recall it. I remember going to see it because of Tim Burton mm-hmm. back then. Yeah, that was sort of a lot. I think a lot of people would agree that was kind of like on his going downhill. He went downhill. Yeah. Where else has he been? Then he's been to like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh yeah. And uh Sweeney Todd was all right. No, no, yeah, I see what no, you're saying. No, see now. what I mean now? Yeah, yeah see? Yeah, all right, yeah. we got Kevin on board. Yeah. I got Kevin on board by saying something was all right. And uh <laughs> he just immediately went. So I... I'm a I'm a big fan of Planet of the Apes, Kevin. I remember you said you, so. You you might you might call me uh you might call me an ape head. And and Here's one thing. You don't get to flex that knowledge. Whereas, I certainly know you're a Star Trek guy and a Doctor Who guy and a Buffy the Vampire Slayer guy and a Friends guy and a... What? Uh, what? 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 <laughs> Have you... Wait. Okay, guys. Hold on. Just because you've seen them all doesn't make you a guy. Okay, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Have you seen all the Friends? I haven't seen all the Friends. Yeah, like, no. I'm not an L Word guy, but I've seen them all. Um, you've seen every episode of L Word? I think so. Okay. What a... We might. What a ride let's that just, is. Let's call, let's call it a night. Kids. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back next week with Busy Daddy's Do L Word podcast <laughs> after I Did binge we... watch every episode. Well, we've already talked about homophobia. Uh, homophobia. Homophonia. Hom- homophonia. Homophonia. Yeah. Anyway, um, you it doesn't come up that often, Planet of the Apes. Yeah, you don't really get to do that one. You don't really get to so pull what, out the whole, like... So uh, how, you've used the word integral. Yeah. Which yeah, is like, not a dander shampoo. Not. No, it could be. Uh, it probably would work better than the one I currently use. But um, I would say Planet of the Apes was, was one that I saw when I was a little kid. And um, it spun me mostly because it had not been ruined for me. Like, I don't remember there ever being a point where I did not know that Luke Skywalker was Darth Vader's son. You know, I didn't. Oh, jeez. This again? Uh, this I again? But really, I didn't know. I didn't know that. I mean, I always knew that at some point. When Planet of the Apes <laughs> that ended, was, and the... all of a sudden it's like, whoa! Yeah. I was, I was twisted. I was like ten years old, and all of a, and it was just like great. So I wanted to seek them all out. After Planet of the Apes, you get into like these movies that are a joy to watch, and then you grow up and you realize, oh. Some of these were pretty crappy, 
but they're still fantastic. Like, there's still something about them that's great. The ideas are so cool in these old, I, uh, old Planet of the Apes movies. I read the the wiki summaries of uh, the five originals. Um, some points lit up. I've certainly seen Planet of the Apes. I definitely have put Beneath the Planet of the Apes in my mind and maybe even Escape. Mm-hmm. But in reading them, they did not seem cheesy as we've come to know those movies. Right. Uh, I was sort of like, I oh, don't know, okay, that's cycle, cool. that matches up, that yeah. lines up there, that does this. and uh, The ideas are fantastic. And, yeah. um, and they're, um, they're campy. They're certainly of their time, but um, I I watched them as recently as like two years ago, and I, I think they stand up pretty well. How um, quickly? Once once a weekend or like just... How quickly did I watch them? Yeah. Like on in the background while I'm drawing over the course of like a couple of weeks probably. Yeah. You know, like, like part of... A lot of things I like become part of that, that Rolodex. Like it's on in the background while I'm doing something else, you know. I see. Um... So then, yeah, we had the, there was a brief TV series, then we had the 2001 remake, and then all of a sudden, 2011 came around, they're like, Planet of the Apes is coming back, we've got the technology, we can rebuild him, here it is, and we get Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Mm-hmm. Which is that where that whole Birds and the Beast conversation started. Absolutely. Yeah. From the, from the James Franco... No, from the Rising, you were talking about, and then, well then, I had to... I had some questions yeah. about, about why certain yeah. things are happening... My, my body is changing. Yeah. My voice has gotten deeper. Yeah. <laughs> I have hair in weird places inside my eyelids. I don't understand it. But that, you, well, you told you're me. You're supposed to wash after, or the hair grows everywhere. Everywhere. Much like Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so we're treated to this new trilogy, and we just, we just finished. We just finished this trilogy with the war for the Planet of the Apes. Mm-hmm. Um, people like this. People really liked it. They're, they're like, how do they like really? Do they really like it? Like, because Rotten Tomatoes says it's good. Like, or like, do you know people? Like, like, if you talk to them, they say, "Hey, this is cool." Yeah, I don't put a ton of faith into the numbers in Rotten Tomatoes. Um, I do read reviews every now and then, but the the pr- people I've talked to are like, "Yeah, it was good. It was it was a good. These were all serviceable movies, and this one ended well." Um. I liked Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I really liked Dawn of the Planet of the Apes because I dig kind of post-apocalyptic. Um, humans are just hanging on by a thread. Society's going down the drain kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, Then War for the Planet of the Apes, it, this one kind of felt like fell a little flat for me. Uh, um, well, the first hour for me was, I watched it in two um, segments. One hour one night and one hour the next night. And uh, after the first hour, I was like, man, you got to be kidding me, dude. Like, I, I really thought they had goofed up um, it, it, to, to pay some attention to what you said about falling flat. Um, we had a Woody Harrelson who's doing a Kurtz thing. Uh, and, and I'm just like, well, of course, some military dude would go mad and off the grid. Yeah. In a situation like this. And, and and we know why. Because we've read Heart of Darkness and we watched Apocalypse Now. Yeah. And 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 when shit gets really weird and sideways, I did not even it's just hitting me now what I'm saying about Heart of Darkness in relation to this movie. But um uh it's you know, when things get really bad out there down in the deep we go wild. Um, complete with like a shaven uh your head in front of the in front of the rest of the platoon, kind of thing. Um, so we we had I think what killed me was the the dignity uh, or the integrity of Caesar um, sending the four army soldiers back and saying they're the message and and basically being human. Yeah, yeah, that's... and and. And at that point, then then just heartstrings are getting played. No one likes to see monkeys get blown up because we've seen them with things actually stuck in their head on videos about treating animals poorly. You know when we test them in laboratories, and and so we're like we're like oh they're monkeys, but 
they're smart, so all they're actually doing is is giving us a war movie. And I've got two leaders, and uh, I don't really care. Yeah, and that's that's pretty much the the spot I found myself in as well, was kind of this... Um, these movies seemed to... These three movies seem to try to continually push the... Um, human beings are really shitty. Um, we will... Uh, we will test vaccines on animals. We will um, treat them like they are just animals. We are, we are, by and large, there's a few of us that are good. There's the James Francos, and there's the um, guy in the second one who played the Orc and Bright. I can't think of his damn name. Um, Orc and Bright. Orc and Bright. Yeah, Jonathan. Jonathan, Jonathan Orc and Bright. Bright. Yeah. Jonathan Orc and Bright in uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And they've got families, and they're good people. But they are generally at the mercy of those humans that are in power who are ruthless and want yeah. to just wipe the apes out because they're just apes, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's kind of boring. It gets kind of boring. And it's in contrast to what I really liked about the original movies, which is um, that apes were shitty too. It wasn't just, it was just that they're flawed. They're f like gods, they're, gods, creatures are flawed. Like, that's a continuing thing in both humanity and in apes in the original series. Um, and, and that's where I think this traps itself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like if you anthropomorphize something, mm -hmm. then it's subject to the human rules. Right. And so where are we then? So yeah. great. Yeah. It's got hair. More hair than me. Yeah, so hopefully... What you've got attached to that is a really good story, which right. it just doesn't. It is essentially like a how do we get to here war movie, um, and uh, and some kind of cool characters tossed in in there along the way. Like I do like Maurice, who popped in since the first one. Um, yep, he's pretty cool. He's got a great design to him. Um, but but yeah, other than that, it's sort of just like watch humans fight apes. And which are like humans, which are like humans, which are now like humans. Um, so then, yeah, it's, it's like, I don't really, I don't really care. I believe you're going to get liberated. It almost, it almost hit me. Uh, the sky at the ending was almost biblical and there was sort of a delivery. There was a, a deliverance total, thing. It, there was a total almost, like, um, like Moses, Moses parallel going right. on there. Yeah. 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 Um, and I, I I couldn't help but to not notice that. Um, you talked about uh, liking to see humans in their uh, uh, decline. Yeah. And what I what I thought was interesting in the second hour of the movie was uh, I desensitized to what I just explained about it's a hairier human style thing fighting another human. Um, blah blah blah. Once uh, the underdog and enslaved. Uh, and of course, I want them to be set free, and of course, it's of course. set up. Uh, conflicting that was the larger picture. Whereas this simian flu, which in Rise of the Planet of the Apes spreads, and we watch patient zero get on a plane and slowly spread the disease at the end of Rise of the Planet of the Apes, we're in decline. We catch up in dawn, and we're in bastions. Of people with some military protection and there's apes out there uh, and, and we watch them go through their own you know trying peace talks uh, and then we find that that simian flu in in war for the planet of the apes has mutated and is is get rising up again and taking people out and Woody Harrelson's crazy soldier is off the grid with his platoon um, and coming under fire by the other army members or marine members or whatever uh because um to quote apocalypse now his methods have become unsound yeah um he, he sees himself as as the head of a holy war what was interesting yeah. was that the flu mutation was another piece in the shit what happens if that happens in your decline that they're making me imagine and i'm like fuck Another wave? Yeah. Another wave? Damn it, man. So now we've got... And then do I... I do really want to kill the apes. Yeah. Yeah, because we've stay got... stay alive. Yeah. And, and, and so and the whole thing gone. was like... Because now we've got a section of humanity who are becoming more ape-like. 
Um, and not only do you have this these apes who are becoming more human-like, you're also seeing your own brothers, in Woody Harrelson's case, son, um, be be mutated into these more ape creatures. So there's this, like, you know, they're crossing each other on the evolutionary scale, um, one going backwards and one going forwards, mm -hmm. and there's going to be a winner. You know, there's going to be someone who's going to, like, Come well, and that's kind of—I kind of so. always felt like it was going to be the age. Sure. Well, that's. But not whole, even not even the with the push. idea that it's getting around okay, back to right. the beginning of the Planet of the Apes. I yeah. mean, just give me what, give me these three. Yeah, no, they, and I know that they never, they never, the stakes were never that high. You always felt like, okay, this is going to be, and a lot of that was, I think, hinged on on Caesar and his like his continual need to do the right thing. You know, he decides not to, which is boring to me. Very boring. Like, he he kills only like by accident. And um, in self defense, um, and he never he never develops, you know. He never really crosses that like that line to become what they are pushing these these apes towards, which is the beginning of the series, which is Planet of the Apes. We're left at the end of this movie with like them basically inheriting what is going to be the landscape, the very familiar desert landscape from the original Planet of the Apes movies. And even in Rise of the Planet Apes, there were little hints that um, that there, there is a Charlton Heston out there in space. You know, they talk about a Saturn probe yeah. going out there. So there, there's little threads that are sort of like, hey, you know what's going on here? This is eventually going to become, you know, Planet of the Apes, um, which is cool. And that kind of hooks me in, but it's not enough to keep me there, you know? Yeah, and so uh, as I numbed out on <clears throat> human Num conflict numbed out. <laughs> on uh, with Caesar... Interesting things were his hallucinations of Koba. Yeah, I, I liked those were cool. That kept me going. I uh, I love the justice of Woody Harrelson getting the disease from finding the doll that their humanoid girl who has the simian flu advanced stage. I don't know if she does or not. She must, she, because she spread it with her doll. She spread it with her doll. And, and initially, you just believe she's mute. Um, and her name is Nova, who is the name of Charlton Heston's love interest in Planet of the Apes, which is kind of cool, but pointless. Um, they also, Bright Eyes is mentioned, and of course, Caesar. Which doesn't make Cornelius. any sense. Doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't. They're just, they're just, that's just No, they're chips. just little, that's they're just little, riffs. they're little riffs. They're, they're little riffs. callbacks. They're little toss it in there. Callbacks, yeah. that's what they're yeah. called. Yeah. They're little um, like, hey, remember this? We... That's what Taylor was called in Planet of the Apes, Bright Eyes. And Cornelius, um, you know what I loved like about the original Planet of the Apes series? That when we first meet the apes in Planet of the Apes, mm -hmm. they look like humans in ape makeup. You know? Yeah. So we're led to believe that these are more evolved chimpanzees and orangutans and gorillas. Yeah. And uh, by the time we get to Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, it's the same actors and the same makeup. But by then, we've gone back in time. So we're in the early 21st century. Yeah. And so these are just supposed to be regular chimpanzees and <laughs> orangutans and gorillas, but they still look exactly the same as what we look yeah, like. Yeah, I was wondering about it's, that when I was reading It's pretty cool. And it. there's this plague that wipes out cats and dogs, and so apes become domesticated. And it's just like, again, like the really cool ideas that... Uh, that are just fun. That was one thing that was just. These movies weren't fun, you know. Like, well, I so I think Rise was fun. Rise I was liked fun watching, and playful, like cool. I would. I liked watching that adventure. Um, this this final one here was like just peril yeah, and violence. Like, okay, man, and just... punishment. And then and then just shoot yourself in the head already. And then it was just <sighs> and. Dawn, I liked because we had. It's like, the... Who hasn't seen the guy oh, say don't. we're not gonna? Don't just what? I, th don't... I thought you were gonna talk about the. Hey, we're gonna save you because we're apes and we're compassionate. You go ahead. I wonder if this is gonna come back and bite me in the ass later on. <laughs> oh, and at the end, oh, it's the oh, same well. dude with the crossbow. Well, and that's, that's been it was done a, a trillion war movie. times. And, yeah, dumbass war movie. Yeah. Man. That's it. Um, it has every line. And then I wonder if that ape, I wonder if that gorilla who is looking longingly, I wonder if he's going to decide to 
Do you change his mind and join the apes? And then he blows the dude. And up he the does. Grenade. And he does. And it's like, yeah. So you always have these these ones that are rising yeah. out, which is was totally not, was not saving Private Ryan. You know, like it was, yeah, <laughs> wasn't even saving Ryan's privates. Um, it's great. Birds and the bees. So yeah. And so those things kind of stick out like sore thumbs. And you know here at Busy Dads, we uh, we write better movies. Or at least baffled by what goes on in the uh, boardrooms when people decide this stuff. And uh, I'm, you know... You want to write a better end to this movie? I don't know if I can. I'll I'm t- kind of tired of that. It's an old thing we do. So, all right. Well, I'll, we've I'll, done do, it. A, I'll do a quick, quick thing that I was hoping for. Mm-hmm. Didn't think I was going to get, but I was hoping. I was hoping for when we see that biblical sky at the end, a pan up, which is where the movie ends, Mm -hmm. pan back down, and we're like 600 years in the future. And we get a glimpse of the proper Planet of the Apes. Like, that actually might have sealed the deal for me as far as forgiving a lot of the crap that came before. I was kind of thinking maybe F-16s would fly over. Ooh. But, uh, and they'd still be on the run. Yeah. Because um, I don't actually believe they're... I actually didn't believe that they were safe. I don't really have any idea how much military is around. I don't no. really think that they can be... Like, like if, if there was just two armies, if it's Woody Harrelson's <laughs> army, He's such a and then the guys in white who ran up in the end, and yeah. then there's an avalanche and they all get taken out by it, then, then the apes are truly free. All right. But I... There's no way to know what's really left, and they don't... I don't think there are hints. That was a shitty, as shitty to way what... to just wipe that whole conflict away. I mean, you know, it's just, yeah. here we go, get what's going to happen. Oh, I know, Avalanche. But that would be it such a terrible way sense. to end if, like, here's Caesar, he's dying, and he like one of the last things he says is, uh, all apes are safe now. And then he dies, and then all of a sudden... <laughs> Apache yes. helicopters come from <laughs> and then drop in napalm. Oh, and God. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's there's a, Caesar don't surf. There's man. somehow a reincarnated Woody Harrelson Kurtz with a cigar and a big uh, bandage around his gunshot wound to the head. And so there's a point um, mm. as the movie peaks. Um, Caesar looks at the other apes and says. I am not as good as you. Yeah. And his his vengeance takes a hold of him, right? Or his rage. And his rage. Yeah, like he becomes. First of all, I don't. Be, I didn't believe he'd go there. I didn't. He seems more than that, and I didn't believe he'd go there. So he does because it's an action movie. Um, or we need to get to this conflict. And Woody Harrelson has got the mutated simian flu from discovering a doll that deaf mute girl leaves in Caesar's uh, cage. And and because he's referred to the fact that he's, he's eliminated all the belongings of these people and he's caught it. It happens quick. He grabs, Caesar grabs the gun, gives him the headshot look. And Woody Harrelson then grabs the gun and aims it to his head. It's like a ten minute scene. And yeah, and it's like, what? So at that point, I'm like, so Caesar, you're conflicted about vengeance, but you send your guys along and say, I'm gonna be badder. I'm gonna be a bad ape. Uh, then you get to a man you've already had a heart to heart with. They've already set us up where like two generals yeah. are there. Woody Harrelson's like, you're good. Oh, you're real good. Uh, he, he, he's actually realizing how smart Caesar is. And then Caesar's given the opportunity to switch to mercy. And he's no longer executing the man he wants to kill. That guy is gone. Yeah. he's And he's they, that man has explained to him how yeah. he did mercy to his own son. Yeah. And Caesar sheds tear during that description. However, it gets pushed far enough in that earlier scene to to try and come to blows with him. But he doesn't kill the man no. who has this disease. That's a great and point. Man. I don't know why he... First of all, I don't know why he didn't seem uh, dumb enough to be subject to his rage. And he didn't seem 
dumb enough to not be merciful. You just wrote a better ending right there. I mean, because the, because uh, the the character development would have been the rage disappears from his face, and he puts this this suffering creature down out of its misery. You know, and and which is what Woody Harrelson was doing. Another interesting yeah. thing was as the apes are tracking Woody Harrelson's army, they find three dead soldiers. And I, once again, I've already numbed out on like we've got a war and a strategy thing going on. But yeah. I'm like, what is going on with those guys killing soldiers? And I like that the apes were trying to figure it out. Yeah, um, yeah, that was cool. That was cool. It was a, it was a cool. There was a cool little twist in the whole idea that like this was not just military fighting the apes that they were they were on the run from like the proper military mm-hmm. or whatever the hell um you know Woody Harrelson uh he does not carry the same uh weight that he used to I do enjoy him and everything that I I, I, him I, I liked yeah. him and I thought it was cool <laughs> to see him look that look but I'm wondering why you got to put Colonel Kurtz in at this point yeah yeah he he seemed to be playing like a I mean, he obviously was aware of it. Perhaps if you're an actor and you get handed the opportunity, there's a whole different thing. Maybe it's a tradition and you're like, wow, I get to finally pull off a Kurtz. I'm going to go Kurtz with this one, man. And maybe that's really cool and we'll never know because, well, we're not actors. Speak for yourself. Yeah? Yeah. What are we doing right now? We're waiting to go to cater and bust tables. That's true. Which yeah. makes us actors. Which makes us makes us actors. Makes us yeah. actors. Yeah. Makes us whatever we want to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Not that there's anything wrong with catering. I'd rather be a magician. Yeah. Than an actor. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Why do I just think of Daniel Day Lewis? Is he like a magician? Is he is he that good? He's a, he's a or is he just a method actor? I mean, you know, he makes uh, he makes people's money disappear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, I thought I thought you were saying you think of him as a magician because of he wore a top hat and like had a mustache, curly mustache. No, I was just thinking someone York. might say he's a magician with his acting. Uh, he's a good actor, but, but like I, I mean, I think actors are good. I don't. I, anyway, yeah, they wouldn't. Yeah, I don't think that's doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, Kevin. Apes <laughs> and the planets of. Oh no! Do we get? Did you pick, you didn't pick up that doll, did you? I did. Holy well, you shit! Fuck, there's there's like six of them left all over the stairs of the studio. Man. Yeah, what I got them. I got them in the cardboard box yeah. that says "Please pick up," which means to pick it up and take mm-hmm. it outside and put it in the trash. Burn it. Burn it. Why not burn it? And Come shoot on. whoever left Somebody. them there. <laughs> yeah, dude, they they already burn <laughs> trash in this neighborhood, anyways. All the time. I'm waiting for a dog to run down the street and bite oh. the fuck out of me. All the time. When I walk down the street, on the way my way to you, the studio. You've been coming to do this for a couple of years now. Um, on Tuesday nights, I can't believe you haven't been bitten by a dog already. I get bitten mm-hmm. by I get bit by dogs daily around here. Yeah, yeah. Those are fleas, man. Those are those are the you get the uh, the old uh, canine flu. Mm-hmm. You know, start yeah. looking at my own balls. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, shitting on the lawn. That's. <laughs> All right. In fairness, I've been that's, shitting on the lawn for years. That's, it's, that's totally. Yeah. But the the ball yeah, looking man. thing is completely. Well, you different. don't want to waste water to keep the water bills real high when you have to be flushing. I am I am so green right now. If it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, go do it in your neighbor's yard. Right. <laughs> I do not Isn't agree. That what the people in Oregon say. I do not agree with the if it's mellow, let it let if it's yellow, let it mellow thing. You you can't cross families i can't let one mellow in your toilet exactly right exactly <laughs> That's what I'm talking. But, all right now how but how far does that family branch extend like if you've got a, a brother-in-law in town <laughs> no <laughs> yeah they, no that's you different. don't you don't Bro- do well he because he can't brother-in-law can't come into your house and let one mellow no you can't do that so no. i should not i should not be able to do that in someone else's but have you ever been in a situation where someone has told you, "Hey, we we let it mellow if it's yellow." Thankfully, no. I have. Really? Like, hey, like, don't don't flush like, it if it's not necessary or something. I'd be like, "Oh, well, then I feel weird." Then I'm like, "Now I'm just." Then you're like in there flushing and going, coughing <laughs> <laughs> and trying to cover. Mm. I did one time come out and go, "I I flushed by accident." It's just you know. Yeah. 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 Things you go, things we do. Human mm-hmm. beings are weird creatures, man. Weird, weird creatures. Weird. Um, flawed, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Want to uh, constantly warring with each other. 
Well, and so that's the thing. Um, I think I believe that Caesar and his ilk should be better than us. See, and when I when I go back and look at the mean, Planet of the Apes, no, there, there, it's just a, it's just an argument for the tre- poor treatment of one over the other. Right, right. And I mean, you know, if you go back and you look at the Planet of the Apes, there's there's full on there's a class system. The orangutans mm-hmm. are the the intelligentsia. The gorillas are the military and the working class. Chimpanzees are like the you know the plebes. Um, it's very much a remodeled human society. There's a great line in the first one where. Dr. Zayas has Taylor by the collar and he says, he's quizzing him. He's like, tell me why all men are created, e- tell me why all apes are created equal. And he says, it seems some apes are more equal than others. You know, and, uh, and that was what I loved about it is, yeah, it was just the upper crust will exploit the lower crust, you know, and, and that's just what it is. Why do you say you believe that they should be better, that in order to kind of inherit this earth, they need to do that or just because of where they came from from where i think from where they came from okay like with the knowledge that our people have been tortured the mercy thing i'm talking about Mm. you know um and so guess what we're not um you you know i mean i i you know they they have both values they want to liberate people or themselves um but some are flawed, some want power, like Coda, or won't forget, or Koba, whatever his name is. Um, but I kind of thought, I'm assuming that the thrust would be never again. They, and ultimately, so, they ultimately are better, though, in, in the way they're depicted in this. And at the end of each of these movies, they are pretty much just trying to escape the wrath of humanity you know like they're they're constantly they didn't mean to start this war in in dawn of the planet of the apes the end of rise of the planet of the apes is them just going hey we got the redwood forest we're good you guys go do what you're gonna do and the end of this one is pretty much like hey we found this spot let's just go there you know but i I mean i get but that's so yeah i but we get kind of dragged through a lot of sameness a lot of sameness uh, that's another and, problem. And, so maybe that's from human contact. So maybe there's a human flu that the simians get. Yeah, like that's the. Uh, I would I would be interested to actually kind of see a different creative team take on the journey from where they end up at the end of this movie to the class system, um, the repression of any type of humanity. You know, treating. Because at some point, um, well, it's actually kind of in battle for the Planet of the Apes. It does get kind of addressed. For a little while, they're trying to live side by side with humanity. And they end up deciding, like, this can't be done. Like, this can't be done. That, that continuation of the word no throughout the entire series is really important. In um, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, it's um, Caesar's first word is no. Yeah. In... Um, conquest of the Planet of the Apes. It is Cornelius's lover's um, first word, no. When, as, as apes are about to kill a human being, she shouts, no! Mm-hmm. And then in Battle for the Planet of the Apes, it is taboo for human beings to tell an ape, no. You cannot mm-hmm. do that. It's punishable by death immediately. Yeah. And then in First Date of the Planet of the Apes, <laughs> it was no. <laughs> Don't do this. Don't. It was no. It was no, but it was more of a, it was a complete uh, sentence. It was more of an insinuation of no. Yeah, it wasn't so much of really didn't well, read their she, I mean, she was at, yeah. body language, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah. her social cues. Hashtag. Yeah. Ape two. <laughs> so they're gonna make another one of these. I. Man. I pulled my punches on that one, man. I you ba- really, I, I, really. I, I, pull, I pulled out. I pulled yeah, out. You pulled out, which is the oh, responsible dude. thing yeah. to do. Yeah. Otherwise, the bees will get you. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you run away. Yeah. Because the birds come right yeah. in. Man. Yeah. You it go is... try and move to the forest and try not to play child support. Scary, scary yeah. shit. Yeah. Scary shit. Ooh. It doesn't matter. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, man. Shouldn't have touched all those dolls. Mm-hmm. 
But uh, yeah, they're gonna make another one of these. I'm sure. That I was about to ask. Is it is it fact yet, or just, just... It, it's not fact yet? But um, they did well enough where I, I they're gonna keep it going. They'll mm-hmm. make a they'll make a fourth one, and they'll try and go kind of full circle with the Planet of the Apes thing. I'm sure. I mean, yeah, that would be it would be cool to see that. Yeah, I I dig that. Um, I enjoyed it enough. Like that's I don't regret having seen them. Um, cl- kind of glad that I finally capped them, capped it off. I, I feel yeah, I, I'm glad that I've watched all three yeah. of them. Yeah, me too. Um, I was reminded that Rise was my favorite. Yeah, I think it, it almost could Rise kind of could have just been something without it being Planet of the Apes. It was totally, like a human yeah, was a and cool an animal movie. experience. It was a cool movie, thing, like a Bond thing, and uh, um. I remember being a little disappointed that they were making another one. You like, you know, I mean, I these days, that just goes hand in hand. I mean, mm-hmm. the movie does well, but I remember when it ended, being disappointed that they set it up so much for a sequel because it, it seemed like such a it could have been a good self contained story. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it didn't have to be a Planet of the Apes movie. So, um, apes loving each other, hating each other, humans. Loving, each, loving other. each other, hating, hating each, other. each other. When are we gonna learn, man? Texting each other. I don't know if we are. I don't either. Yeah. No. But we we'll, we don't in these stories. No, not at all. We, we bomb we, the fuck we out of each the other. Same. Fucking Which mistake. so the desert? I think they're living in. The desert is a forbidden zone. Desert is the forbidden. So zone. Right. they've kind of showed up in a zone that w- was actually created by us with nuclear warfare and those other ones. I but, just uh, wanted to see the Statue of Liberty. You know, That's I, I wanted to see F sixteen. I want to see the stealth bomber go over and the Rose Parade come marching through. Really, you just want yeah, to come on human no, parade. We're not safe now. Humans are everywhere. Let's keep going to the to a forbidden zone too. In the. Uh, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, the second one, mm-hmm. it was very apparent that Charlton Heston wanted nothing to do with these movies anymore. He shows was up. Was it when he said, I want nothing to do with this <laughs> movie said, in the said, middle of it? You, he gets up, breaks the fourth wall, and just yeah. says, I don't want anything to do with you losers anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, he's in the first two minutes of the movie, and then he actually disappears. There's no explanation. He's up against a rock, and he vanishes. And then they replace him with a guy who looks just like Charlton Heston, who's another astronaut, who Nova finds, and she spends the entire movie with him. And then in the last two minutes of the movie, Charlton Heston comes walking out of like a underneath a uh, cave underneath the ground. And he's got like a like a dirty blanket on. He looks around and he's just like, "What's going on here?" There's no explanation. It's just like it doesn't make any he didn't sense. Join the mutant people? No. They pull their skin off. I mean, he's that's the insinuation, but at no point do you see him throughout the rest of the movie. That's unexplained. Yeah, it was yeah. weird. I mean, it was just and then and he is the one who ends up like hitting the button on the nuke, which yes. ends up blowing up the entire Planet of the Apes. Apparently, that's the bomb that the the psychic, the telepath underground people made. Yeah, very Omega Man looking telepath. Also a Charlton Heston movie. And called the Alpha and Omega. That uh, weapon. That's right. Oh, and that's another reference in this one, because that's the name of the military. What's the name of the military? It's the the Alpha and Omega is the name of their squadron. Oh. I was like, I thought it was the army and stuff. (laughs) It's just the army. And a bizarre uh, alternate reality twist, the army is called the Alpha. The army Alpha is the called Omega. the Alpha and the Omega. It's everything, yeah. I guess. Yeah. 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 There you go. Whoo. Omega Man. Mm hmm. Great movie. Remake of Last Man on Earth, which was a adaptation of I Am Legend. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good book. Couldn't tell you. You been, what are you you're listening to anything right now? Um not really. I mean, I am. We are listener. We're gonna listen to "Wind Up Girl" by Wind Up Paro Girl. Bagliacopi. Yeah, that's that's her name. Yeah, I think it's a he. Is it Paolo? See, this is I only I only listen to female female authors now. So well, that's good. That's that YA about. book we were talking about. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. yeah, then then it's fine. So nothing else. No, I've uh, kind of punched out on Altered Carbon too. Um, I only watched two episodes of that. And you're donezo. Not donezo. I'm gonna gonna revisit it. I'm just 
kind of taking a little uh, little break. I I am letting. I told you to be careful, didn't I? I am letting some negative buzz. It's gotten like really bad. Yeah, like it's like it's, I know nothing. Yeah, I know. I know just nothing. A hunch from I, the I know nothing. Um, so we'll see. Let's it got see. so much hype though. It did. Well, I've been reading what did I read. Um, I read a story called Barbary Station by R.E. Stearns, a 2017 uh, Hugo contender um, about space pirates. I've also, which just sounds lame. It really isn't. But um, Space pirates? It that was, sounds cool. It was less, to, eh, I don't know. They're not, yeah, okay. Uh, there, there, there are some cooler pirates in other places in this world of sci-fi. But, uh, um, and now I'm reading a a, um, a book called Blind Sight by uh, someone with the last name of Watts, and it is a 2017 uh, sci-fi book too, and it's killing it. I'm about a hundred pages in. Um, so if you're out there reading, you might could check those out. And then email us. Well, and say, well, hey, I, I read something finally. You could email us if you want to at busydadsdosci-fi at gmail.com. I mean, naturally, if you would like to um, take a look at a really good example of my humor, wit, artistry, you can follow us on Instagram at busydadsdosci-fi. We're always punching in something new there. And, um,. Did you just telegraph me a wink? I didn't telegraph you God, a wink. I think I was, I was waiting. I couldn't tell whether I was going to wink or fart. And I was trying to determine which would be... You don't be, telegraph a fart. Which would be more simian? To wink or to fart? Depends on which simians you're speaking of. We're just all trying to be human here, man. I know. Okay? You know? What's the thing, what's the thing to do here? Well, uh... I've done a lot of one of those things and didn't tell you about it the whole time we've been recording. You did a lot of winking, huh? Yeah. <laughs> right. Winking. Right. Winking. Winking at that... Winking uh, a lot. Yeah. Winking at that uh, chimpanzee out my, outside the on the window there on the in the tree. Not bad. That's not a chimpanzee, George. Who is it? Harbinger of death? <laughs> yeah, Harvey. I've been, I've been running. Of death. I've been Harvey Binger. Harvey Binger. <laughs> of death. Jonathan, Jonathan Orkinbright. <laughs> God, I really hope that next year, like an actor is it the breaks dude? on the scene and is just his name is Jonathan Orkinbright. The you mean dude, the guy who played the orc, the, the dude, lead orc? the dude who plays Steve the Gutenberg? lead orc, or is he... <laughs> <laughs> that dude who plays the lead orc in Bright is the lead in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I think, pretty sure, ninety percent. Wait, the really I mean, good actor you were talking about? The, the guy yeah, who can play yeah, everything. Yeah, the guy he's like he's Welsh and he's yeah, he's, he's something he's else. Nothing. He's in a Jennifer Lawrence movie. He's in Red Sparrow coming out soon. Yeah, which is not sci-fi. No. It kind of seems sci-fi. It's a big red poster. It's not. It's about there, like a it was the same. Cold wasn't War there like a, what was assassin. that platinum blonde movie or whatever? Atomic like, Blonde could have been like a sci-fi movie. It is the exact same movie as Atomic Blonde, Red Sparrow. It's about like a woman who's programmed to be an assassin. Are those and... sci-fi then? No, no, like, they're spy like movies. Brainwashed? No, it's a... James Bond sci-fi. What the hell's going on with that? I don't know. Me Yankee. too. It's it's, it's ha- you know you too. No, you, you, you as well. You too. That's my hashtag. Don't you as well. You as well. <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> um, me. It's their time, me man. Also? It's, it's, it's time. It's a good, good time to be a for those people? strong, strong woman. Unless you're married to an ape named Caesar, then you get killed by Woody Harrelson. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Oh well. Well, that's you know. It's, maybe all, next, it's all symbolism, folks, maybe next if you know time, what we're Caesar. saying. You know what's a missed opportunity? What? Is that there's no uh, ape named Brutus. There never was. No. No. Would have, mean, been a, would have been a missed opportunity right there. Yeah. Hashtag E2. E, E2. <laughs> Good night, nurse. Good night. <laughs>